about this game uh this is war for throne of course uh it is solo and it is a 2000 uh rated minimum so a couple of things about solo that's different than ffa firstly um if you're unfamiliar with four player chess solo uh is the idea that all players uh second third and fourth place will lose equally. That doesn't mean the same amount of points, but they'll lose uh, relative to their ratings uh, the same amount. So um, that means there's one first place winner and three losers, uh, which also means that there's more competition. The other thing to keep in mind is that in a game like War for Throne, um, it, the end scenario will usually be that one person gets King of the Hill and then the other players are losers. Um, I would have liked to see blue capture there. I could have gotten one. Um, because that is the case with uh, with solo and whatever else, uh, whatnot, um, it's kind of a natural consequence of the game that this whole idea about pawns and kings being worth one point or three point, yeah, it's somewhat important, but doesn't play as big a role. Um, same thing with checkmates. You can always tell who the amateurs are because they're they're going for checkmates in a solo game. Uh, it doesn't really matter who gets a checkmate here or there. What matters is who's the last one standing. So um, when players start going after uh, after royal kings, um, typically that's a problem. I think let's see here. Yeah, that protect, protects the the back rank from blue. Uh, of course, red can't continue to push against blue because I'm threatening at the same time. Um, okay, so we'll continue to develop here. The gameplay is very similar at uh, at the beginning, um, but like I said, I, I'm more uh, ready to capture uh, pawns with a king, uh, a one point for three point trade usually, and it is still one point for three point, but like I said, um, it doesn't really matter who comes out ahead on points, it's just who's going to get King of the Hill. Because uh, as we know from playing this game, um, getting King of the Hill is usually the, the game ending um, game ending action, and the person who does so is, is the winner. So we will uh, continue to play this game of solo, and I'll point out different things as we go along. I don't think there's anything that I can do tricky with red. I'm going to continue developing. Um, these two files tend to be the ones that are hardest to develop, I find. So, um, you know, getting getting these three uh, promoted or at least ready to promote early in the game is uh, is a benefit. Um, so blue can attack yellow here if he wants. We'll see see how that works. I don't think, yeah. So that would have required him to kind of make a sacrifice there, but I don't think it's going to happen. Ah, now yellow's messed up. Uh, red must intervene if 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 yellow is going to not lose material, or blue could just not play the the right moves. Um, to take that back for a second, I know this will jump me forward as soon as as soon as we're there. Um, where are we? Yeah. So I capture. Uh, blue attacks yellow. Yellow has to recapture. Then blue can attack. Uh, and I can attack at the same time. So that's what I was pointing out there. Um, for now, though, we're just going to keep going with this game. I know you guys want to see gameplay and not, not a whole lot of, uh, uh, what was I going to say, an analysis. So we'll we'll keep things moving along here and try not to take up too much time. Uh, I'm just kind of going over basic tactics since I know most of you know them already. All right, what else is happening? Uh, yellow has, has been going hard on promotion, uh, almost fully promoted at this point. Blue has kind of been defending uh, for most of this game, wants to find good ways of uh, getting his promotions in. Okay, so that's a mistake by Red, just a simple uh, two-move combo. How is Blue not going to... Okay, you know what, we'll, we'll try something else here, see, see if Blue is paying attention. 
So capture, and then I capture here, blue can capture there, and red's attacked twice. Let's see. Let's see if we can make up for blue's disastrous uh, just lack of attention. Okay, so the answer is no. You'd think in a game where the, the rating minimum is 2,000 that people would see things like a simple two-move combo, but apparently not. Um, the other idea that may be coming into play here is that um, you know, usually in FFA games, your opposite is somebody who you want to cooperate with. Uh, you can arrive at a mutually beneficial outcome by cooperating with your opposite. Um, in this case, there's more hesitation along those fronts because of the fact that you can't both earn points, right? Blue might not be as willing to cooperate with me because uh, if, if he cooperates with me too much and I become too strong in the game, uh, he's he's going to lose, uh, which means he's losing points. Uh, rating points, that is. He's losing, losing rating points if he doesn't, doesn't come in first place. So it's, it's hyper-competitive, um, which sometimes detracts from that opposite cooperation idea, uh, which might have been what Blue was considering there. I, I have no idea why Blue wouldn't have played that. Um, usually that, that idea of being more willing to betray that opposite cooperation comes in comes in at the end game we obviously aren't anywhere close to that yet uh, it would be at this stage of the game it would be uh, it would still be mutually beneficial for blue and i to cooperate against yellow or red um, so i would just attribute that to being a blunder from blue two moves in a row just you know red was attacked twice and blue refused to capitalize on that Kind of disappointing that uh, that we don't have a good opposite here. Okay, nothing I can do against yellow at this point, but I do have to be careful about red uh, taking an opportunity against me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna exchange there. Just continue developing. Um, this is a game where I've held off on developing this pawn uh, until the end. Um, you know, here, here's again an opportunity for blue to maybe capitalize against against red being overloaded. Um, I'm going to step back. I want to try and get this a two-step promotion, but I also want to be very careful about my king size king side over here. Uh, red could be could be stepping into trouble. Um, I'm going to capture. If yellow goes here, then red could be in trouble. If if blue plays along which he's not going to. Okay, So now it's just uh, exchanges on both fronts. For us, in solo gameplay, having more material towards the end of the game is, is always a good thing. Um, capture, recapture, not afraid from yellow attacking the undefended king with help from red. Um, I just noticed that I have this idea. Let's... Uh, Let's wait to capitalize on that. Yeah, so red sees that too. Um, I'm going to be hesitant to put material in the center just yet. Although maybe this, this would be a good time to do so. Uh, okay, let's go for it. If anything, I can prevent yellow from bringing more material in. Although maybe I want yellow to have more material in the center. And if, he's, if yellow is trading or not trading with blue over here, Yellow trading with blue in the center might be a good thing for us, uh, material-wise. Um, so again, maybe seeing some inexperience from blue, the fact that he has two kings in the center when no one else has any material, uh, or no one else has equal material in the center. Um, at this stage in the game, you really want as much material outside the center as possible. If you're going to put one in, um, you know, either keep it in the corner or you better be prepared to trade off a lot on the outside. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm kind of trying to build a front against yellow here. I want to kind of push yellow this way um, and kind of nudge him into trading with, with blue, which would be a good thing for us. Although red could capitalize on, on any trading activity that I go with, go with against yellow. 
Um, not in a way where I'm losing material, but just in a way that he's forcing me to trade, which I don't think I want to do at this point with red. Um, it does look like we're probably probably in the lower percentiles when it comes to material remaining on the board. So we will we will be conservative for now. Nothing tricky going on with with yellow or with red. Um, you know, if, if blue played a move like okay, so so now maybe there's something. Let's let's see what we can figure out here. Blue could do that. I could capture. Will yellow intervene? That's that's the big question here. And yellow yellow sees what's coming. So um, I'm just gonna step back. Like I said, I, I don't want to be trading off material at, at this point in the game. Um, kind of kind of nervous about how much material we have on the board heading into an end game. I'm not really concerned about scores. Uh, looks like things are about even. But again, I'm kind of feeling that our material... I mean, let's do a quick count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm not going to count the one inside. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And yellow has a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. We're going to continue that idea that I was mentioning earlier. Um, pushing yellow on this front, trying to establish establish position in this corner. Um, I'm also going to do this, which I know opens us up to this attack possibly from blue, even more so, more of a possibility in solo than in FFA. But now I can attack yellow from the outside and, and he can't step, step aside this way. Um, let's do this, just so yellow doesn't have any attacks on us here. And now I'm gonna kind of play a few waiting moves. So, Blue could go here, I could go here. Yellow looks like he's bringing reinforcements. Let's try this idea that we were going for earlier. I think yellow's gonna intervene again. We'll see though. Yeah, yellow's gonna intervene there. Um, so too bad for us. I will trade off a little bit with yellow. I do want to keep this this idea of having a, a front that I said earlier. Um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna back away from red here. If yellow wants to trade, I'll allow it. But I don't want to be trading with red. I'm hoping that blue's gonna push a little bit against yellow. I'd really like to see some trades over on this side. I will do this just to open that possibility, even though it's not going to come into play right now. Play a few more waiting moves here. So I'm ready to back up that king in the center, although that's really a bad idea for, for where we are positionally and material-wise. So we will continue to wait for now. Um, maybe swing that that one around. Not too sure what that's doing. I guess this this king is supported twice now, at the very least. Um, I can do that. Threaten a, a capture with a check. Yellow tries this, I think I'll interfere with red. Or maybe this. Yeah, regardless, that would not be a good idea for yellow. Okay, so now red is very limited on material. Um, blue and I could, could get some something going over there. Um, but 
doesn't look like that's happening just yet. Okay, so I think this will force a trade with red, either with me or blue. Yeah, which is what I what I want. Um, do I want to keep trading with red? I don't think so. Yellow has the most material left on the board. Red is kind of uh, red is kind of useless over here. So now blue and I would do well to turn our attention to yellow and try to limit down some of the material that yellow has remaining while red can't do too much. Interesting idea by blue. I'm not sure what that's doing. I think he's fine to keep two in the center for now. Now yellow would be hesitant to engage against blue even if he could. This is not a, an attacking position from yellow, but he would be hesitant just because of, of my material over here. I think at this point, we can move forward with this idea. Eventually, we might have something in the center, but also we're, we're trading off with yellow, which is a good idea. Um, blue could even, yeah, blue could even join in that attack here. Uh, I think this would have been a better, better move. Let's see. So here I'm kind of coercing blue to continue that attack. Uh, I think I'm, I'm hoping that blue is going to trade down with yellow just so that we have a material advantage. Um, but things things are looking pretty good for us, I think, at, the, at this point. Uh, yellow's looking kind of unstable. Blue has pulled out of the center. Red isn't doing too much. Now blue's trading with yellow, which we said was a good thing. Um, let's see. If I do, uh, no. I don't want to do this because, again, just because blue's my opposite, especially in solo, doesn't mean that he's going to cooperate with me. So look at this, tied up 52 points apiece, and we each have three kings remaining. How balanced of a game is this? I don't think, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen seen something like this in, in a War of Thrones game. Tied up on the scoreboard, we each have three points, or three kings remaining. Uh, I guess yellow, you could say, is a little bit worse off with four checks. Instead of the rest of us with five. Um, I'm gonna let red into the center. I'm okay with that. Um, red putting a king in the center means that he has less material on the outside to attack us. I have a feeling this is going to be a very balanced game up until up until the end game, where we can probably expect some fireworks. We'll see. Yeah, blue into the center now is. Yeah, not a really, not a great decision because now he has one king to defend against two from red and one from yellow. And we'll see, we'll see how this works. Interesting move by by blue. Um, I'm gonna trade with yellow. We'll see if red follows suit. He will. Now yellow can go into the center here. Again, things are very balanced. If I was blue, I'd be I'd be pulling out there. And we'll try to try to get our royal king into the center. See how things are going to go here. We do have to pay attention to time. We don't want that red royal in the center. We'll try this. Blue almost appears like he's going for stalemate, which does nothing in solo. Let's 
So we'll, we'll put our Royal in the center. Nothing wrong with that. Um, don't have too many good moves, but uh, then again, having our Royal in the center is, is better than the alternative. Huh. So now yellow is probably thinking it's a, it might be a good idea to get uh, get out of the center. I'm going to reinforce that decision by not allowing him to re retake this square. And once he does leave, I'm going to try this, although I'm not, not sure if that's going to work for us. I do want yellow out of the center, no doubt about it. I'm going to to wait to see how things develop here. Okay, uh, now's our moment. Got to try it. Is blue going to capture? Is blue going to capture? No, he's not. Now, if yellow gives check. Yeah, yellow would not be wise to give a check there. Uh, yellow has to go here. Unless he's not paying attention. Fingers crossed. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that! Yellow caught him sleeping. Good game. Yeah. That's the other thing about solo, is you get more points for a win. 26 points is is more than um, than you would usually see in, in FFA. So I'm very happy with this, this win. Uh, quick introduction to Solo for all you guys. Um, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you guys again soon.